Good morning, everybody. Today we're at Burlington Community Sailing Center on the shores of beautiful and scenic Lake Champlain. I'm joined today by Owen Milne, who is the executive director, and I'm really excited to get to know community sailing better this morning. Uh, starting off, how many years has your organization been here? So we've been here about 29 years this year. Wow, that's a long time. And what, do you, what are some of the lessons you guys learned and what do you do? So we started, you know, 29 years ago. Um, our founders realized that uh, uh, sailing had become a little unaffordable for a large part of the population. And that was tied up into the idea of boat ownership. So we really kind of got started by um, creating a fleet of boats that people could rent and come down and learn to sail on. And, uh, and reduce that barrier of accessing sailing in Lake Champlain. Uh, and, uh, and ever since then, it's just about uh, identifying someone's barrier to access and uh, breaking down that barrier so that people can go out and enjoy sailing on Lake Champlain. Wow, that's really good mission. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, what program specifically do you guys offer to new sailors? So, it varies quite a bit. Um, we, uh, a lot of what you'll see as you w would be down here on a day like today would be a lot of summer campers. So we serve about 500 kids in summer camp. Um, but um, what you'll also see are about um, a couple dozen um, adults that are coming down to learn how to sail. Um, and they're learning to sail so that they can eventually, you know, come down and start renting and uh, going out on the lake on their own. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, we offer programs for individuals with uh, physical and cognitive disabilities. Um, we uh, offer uh, paddleboard and kayak and uh, canoe rentals for people that haven't yet learned to sail but want to go out and enjoy the lake. Wow, that's really great to hear that you guys are expanding accessibility to Lake Champlain. Uh, my next question is, if you've been sailing for a few years, kind of in the intermediate range, are you able to come down in here and rent a sailboat? Yeah, so uh, we're actually one of the community sailing centers that has really made it very easy. So uh, as long as anybody knows how to sail, all we have is a um, fairly rudimentary written test that our team kind of works with somebody to make sure that they know how they're doing and what they've got going on. And then we've got kind of a clearly defined area in Burlington Bay where we let people go out and venture and explore uh, the lake on their own. That's awesome. Uh, so next question is something that you mentioned previously. How are you guys uh, working to break down a lot of the barriers to entry in the sport? I know you mentioned rentals and uh, early programs, but maybe talk about how you get kids to come here and start learning at a young age, which really can ingrain them into the sport. Yeah, so um, it started by um, reducing that uh, financial barrier to access, um, both through boat ownership, but then we started creating a scholarship specifically for individuals that couldn't afford to either rent or um, learn to sail or send their kid to summer camp. And so uh, so that's what we eventually started breaking down was that financial barrier to access. And then, as I mentioned, with uh, you know things related to disability and physical uh, limitations, we um, uh, acquired um, adaptive equipment um, and we partnered with Vermont Adaptive to um, reduce those barriers to access. Um, one of the next groups we worked with were, um, you know, we'd noticed that um, there was a gender disparity um, between men and women participating in the sport. And so we created uh, gender specific programming for women and girls to participate in sailing. And then more recently, um, we've created um, the diversity access initiative to increase uh, diversity um, among uh, black indigenous people of color to have their kids come through for sailing camp. Um, so that's been the more recent barrier that we've worked to overcome. Yeah, super, super important in terms of getting diversity. So uh, before we started the interview, you mentioned that you've been here about five years. So some, what were some of the changes you had to make during COVID and have all of them 
all of those been kind of brought back to pre-COVID or have you stuck with some of those? Yeah, well, one of the first things we had to do was we had to cancel our floating classrooms program. Um, so when the schools let out, uh, we weren't able to run that STEM education program. And, but at the same sense, we know that, you know, summer camp is kind of like glorified childcare in a lot of ways. So the, one of the first things we did was actually to open a childcare facility open our doors to child care facility for um, essential personnel at the time. Um, and uh, and then that summer, as we transitioned into 2020, we had to make the choice of, you know, are we going to be a facility for adults or are we going to be a facility for children? Um, because we couldn't do both. And that year we, had, we just focused on summer camp. Fortunately for us um, is that, uh, you know, this year a lot of those restrictions have lifted so we're able to open our doors for everyone and then the other thing um, that we did um, starting in the pandemic was uh, you know we're well known for hosting uh, cool fundraising events um, so what we created was the flotilla concert which is you know if you've ever heard of a drive-in movie we actually created a float up concert where we put a stage right at the edge of the water and then invite people to arrive by boat and watch a concert from their boat. So uh, we're gonna do that again this year. Uh, uh, we hope that all the viewers will you know, consider coming to Flotilla again this year. Uh, do you know when that event is gonna be taking place? It's July 16th. Uh, and the one benefit about it this year too is that because of some of the restrictions lifting, we're able to offer a uh, general admission ticket. So if somebody doesn't have a boat, um, they can just you know pay and come enjoy the concert on the dock, right in front of the, the, the stage. Oh, that sounds like something I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I might come down for that. Um, so tell me now about your background. I know I mentioned previously you started five years ago. Uh, what drew you to this location and this organization? Yeah, so... Uh, I uh, had been one of those kids who uh, couldn't have afforded summer camp on my own. And then one day, uh, um, you know, somebody who uh, was running a summer camp had said to my parents, hey, we'd love to have Owen come by. And my parents were like, we can't afford, you know, summer camp. And he said, it's fine. He can, you know, come wash dishes. We'll scholarship it. And that was a real big you know, inflection point for me. Summer camp is this cool thing where, you know, it's not school and it's not home. It's this in-between world. And uh, and that, you know, really changed things uh, for me. And, you know, fast forward decades later and I'm a not so responsible single dad and I'm shopping for summer camp for my daughter in June. And the only thing left is math camp and sailing camp. And I had said to my daughter, uh, so how do you feel about sailing camp? And she's like, well, I'm not so sure. I'm like, sorry, let me rephrase that. You're going to sailing camp? Uh, and, uh, and she uh, said, okay. And interestingly, in her three weeks here, I saw a lot of the same positive changes for her that I had experienced. And so, you know, fast forward about another decade later, and uh, this job opportunity came up and I did my, some research. And I realized that the Sailing Center scholarships about one out of every three kids who come through our door. And it was that realization for me that I would have the opportunity to amplify and replicate what I had experienced as a young person uh, for other kids in the community. And I jumped at the chance. That's really amazing. Speaking from personal experience going to camp, I think it really <laughs> helps with the independent aspect because you're not around your parents, so you get to make more of your own decisions, yeah. which you kind of don't get uh, in school and when you're at home. Uh, so how many boats do you guys have in your fleet? So it's a, it's a big range. Uh, you know, if you look at everything from paddle boards to, you know, 23 foot sonars, we have over 150 in the total fleet. Um, yeah, but we have about um, uh, eight uh, keel boats um, about 30 um, uh, adult dinghies, um, you know, and then about another 30 um, plus uh, kids dinghies as part of our camping fleet.
So if uh, I wanted to come down here on the weekend, what are your hours of operations and what would be the process to rent a boat? Yep, so um, you, on the weekends we operate from 9 a.m. until 8.30 p.m. Generally we send out the last renters at 6.30 because you can rent for two hours. Um, and, uh, and sorry, that's uh, 9 to 8, not 8.30. Uh, and, uh, you know, what you would do is come down and take a, a quick written test and our people would make sure that you knew how to sail. And then once you're given the clear, you can uh, grab your sail, walk right down to the dock and uh, either launch your boat if you're taking it out digging or go out to the, um, one of the keel boats and sail from there. Um, if you're coming down to use a paddle board, you don't have to take a written test to go do that. You just come right down, uh, uh, give us your information, and then you know go ahead and take a, a paddle board or a kayak out. And uh, how long is your season? How long do you guys stay open? Um, for that sort of daily rentals will happen through until Labor Day. Then we switch to weekends. Um, but we're renting um, straight through till Indigenous Peoples Day in, in mid-October. Okay, that's a lot longer than I've heard other places. Yeah. So it's good to have that accessibility. Yeah. Um, so if I have a boat that I wanted to launch, could I use your facility as a boat launch or no? Uh, not yet. Um, we are working on uh, a project to expand our waterfront. And once we do, uh, we're actually going to be breaking ground on that this fall. Um, hopefully, once we finish our fundraising. Um, we'll be able to have um, a facility that's more conducive for people to launch their, you know, small uh, sailboats. And will that be a source of revenue for you guys, or will that be uh, like free? It depends on the size of the boat. If it's something that you can hand trailer down yourself, um, we probably wouldn't charge for it if you're just going to be walking it out a ramp. Um, if you be, would be using a full-on hoist to hoist yeah. it into the water, that's something that would be a, uh, a, paid, a paid service. Okay, well, that's all the questions I have. Do you have anything else you want to add before no. we leave? Thank you for uh, thinking of us, and, uh, and uh, I hope you're able to make it down for the Flotilla concert. Yeah, definitely. I really want to. Uh, thanks for meeting with me. Sure. Appreciate it, and yeah. have a good day. Yeah, you too. All right.